Jeff and the team are gearing up for another busy day at the clinic, but it might not be that normal. There's strange goings on at Remarkable Vets with the arrival of an unusual bird called Marigold. Making an interesting sound. The clinic cat Diesel is straightened to see what all the racket is about. Yes, well. Even Jeff is bemused by the strange sounds coming from the cage. But Marigold's not a duck, she's a chicken doing a duck impersonation. Jeff suspects Marigold has something stuck down her throat, so he feeds a tiny rubber tube down to try and dislodge it. It seems to have done the trick. But no, it seems nothing will shut this honking hen up. A dose of anti-inflammatory is the best bet, and she should be a bit quieter tomorrow. Satisfied that peace and quiet has been restored, Diesel returns to guarding the visitor's book. From farms and fields to the high country stations, inspections, detections, and examinations, and highly hygienic inseminations. He's a remarkable vet. He's got stuff for your puppies, for sheep and for pets. Under this large pile of fluff is a rare breed of mountain cat, which originates from America. He's a Maine Coon. Um, he has a slightly sort of messy hairstyle. I'm not one to talk, but um, so he's having a total body shave today in preparation for the height of summer. And he's such a cool cat. I can't hold his head with one hand. <laughs> it's too big. And today, this big cat and his brother are getting a haircut. The Maine Coons come from Maine in the United States, and it was originally thought that they were bred with raccoons, hence Maine Coon. OK, all good? Yep. These cats are much larger than a domestic moggy, and while they're used to cold and snowy weather, they aren't built for a hot central Otago summer. We're asked about showing cats that I end up with here. Absolutely everywhere. I feel like it's in my nose, eyes, all of my clothing. It's horrible. While Alicia will be picking cat hair out of her clothes for the next few days, twins Nala and Simba are back at home and can now enjoy the summer without their supersized winter coats. Well, they're hard to groom because they've got, like, rabbit sort of fur on them. And we just think it's unkind to keep all that fur on them, especially in the summertime. <laughs> but in saying that, they are treated as ordinary cats. They just have a designer shape. Back at the clinic, an emergency case is being carried in. Poppy is a cat whose love for fish has led her into a very sticky situation. She's uh, got a fish hook in her um, little pool there. Oh, crikey. It's, it's, sweetie, it's, it's an easy diagnosis, isn't it? Oh, it's no, really this is shaking. <laughs> hey, what we might do is we'll just take her through to the consult room. Yeah, just going to get a, a look under some better lights, OK? Mm -hmm. Don't think I've ever seen a fish hook in a pool before. <laughs> yeah. Had them in tongues and yeah. lips, oh. their mouths. I think she must have just jumped on it. The best way I find with dealing with these is to give them a very short anaesthetic. Mm. And then I can just poke the, the hook where I want, nip the barb off, and then it slides out yeah. you know, yeah. nice and easily, OK? But following closer examination, the problem triples. Oh, it's got three barbs. Oh, here's two. You can see Poppy's been trying to get the hook out with her tongue, but um, that'll heal up nicely. The tongue's really good at healing. Right, so we just have to work the barbs through to the point where we can get below the barb. I'm going to nip that off. <coughs> just imagine if you're a fish. There we go. So two of the barbs were through the toes. These ones here, this one was spare. We just nipped the barbs off and managed to pull it out. So old Poppy won't go playing with the fish hooks again, I suspect. So Poppy is sent home without her fishing gear. And now Jeff is off on another farm call, but on the way he's picking up eldest daughter Nigella, who is almost as interested in animals as her dad is. And she's especially fond of ponies. 
Honky the donkey and his mates Puffy and Lily belong to part-time vet nurse Vicky. And while Nigella keeps busy feeding the little guys, Jeff has an appointment with Puffy the pony, who needs to be gelded. He's just starting to feel himself. He's actually getting a little bit dangerous now, so no time like the present. He may sleep a little bit longer, but they're all a bit unpredictable. He just pays to get on with the job. You can't help but feel sorry for them, can you? <laughs> Poor thing, but you know, it has to be done before he did an injury to himself or to one of the others. It's definitely timely. They're never routine, you know, they can mm. always, something can go wrong, so there's always a bit of an adrenaline surge, I think, anesthetising a horse and doing the surgery on them. The operation is complete, and Nigella has loved getting up close to these friendly fellows. And Honky the donkey was just happy the vet visit wasn't for him. <laughs> Back at the clinic, Nikki has a very special visitor. Now, yeah, well, the Tibetan Terrier actually comes from Tibet originally. They were companions to the monks, and they were only ever actually given as gifts by the monks to people. Okay, little man. A puppy as unique as Oscar comes with some unique problems. This hair is going to cause him problems in that it's just growing straight into his eyes. Mm -hmm. What you need to do on a pretty regular basis is just trim it back a little bit. But he is clear for a more common dog problem. Queenstown is really good for not having fleas unless we have warm, humid weather, which is what we've had right. lately. I haven't seen a flea since I've been here. I've been here two years. Oh, wish they're all as good as that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, you're a good dog, aren't you? So after charming Nikki and getting a clean bill of health, Oscar's off home for some lunch. <laughs> Another charming visitor arrives, this time to see Jeff. This is Stanley, and he's a pet goat, and he's suffering from some strange lumps on his ears. We just noticed it yesterday, and then Stan thought maybe the other goats might have it as well. So we haven't been able to get close enough to them because they're not as friendly as him. See, there's a couple of things that could be going on. It could be just physical damage to his ears because of where he's sticking his head and, and his browsing. He might be getting injured there. Is there anything pr prickly? Oh, um, the mulberry bushes. Mulberry bushes. But the goats eat, eat them every day, all of them. Okay, possible, but it could be a possibility. There could be prickles. And there is, a, I guess, a, a small possibility that there could be some sort of mite involved, some sort of parasite. More likely to be traumatic damage to those ears. Okay. Okay. Where did all these raisins come from? From Stanley. Stanley's raisins are certainly not the worst mess Jeff's had to clean up. This is very civilised, Stanley. It's all part of the service. Jeff takes a small sample of one of the lumps for further testing, but if Stanley's appetite is anything to go by, it's nothing too serious. He always eats that tree, it'll never really grow up. <laughs> Summer in central Otago brings a new hazard for many long-haired dogs. Barley grass. The seeds from this long grass have a sharp barb which pierces the skin and works its way into the dog. They often find their way into sensitive spots like ears and between toes, and if not removed early, they cause infections and create a major problem. Oh, this really hurt. There we go. The team at Remarkable Vets have been inundated with this problem, and the latest victim is a little Bichon Frise called Sophie. Oh, that's no good. No. It's uh, grass seeds just to get everywhere, don't they? They do. Jeff discovers a grass seed lodged deep in Sophie's ear. It's very painful for her and needs to come out tonight. What I'm going to do is just give a wee injection while you're here, okay? okay? And uh, then you can just sleep with me, and I might just deliver it back on the way home. Okay. okay. That's fine. It takes a steady hand to remove a slender seed from a small dog's ear. There we go. So that was well stuck in there. I was just managing to grab the tip and there's still two centimetres of, of seed there down in that canal, so that's been tickling up the eardrum, no question. It's late on Sunday night and Jeff was more than happy to personally deliver Sophie on his way home. Christine, hi. Come on. Hey, sweetie. Sophie rejoins her two mates, and Christine will make sure they don't go playing in the long grass again. 
It's a rainy old afternoon at Remarkable Vets, and Jeff has been called into Queenstown to meet an arrival from across the lake. <coughs> Biddy is a working dog from Walter Peak Station, and she has a lame leg. She's a six-year-old heading dog, good working dog, very fast on the hill, very good with the sheep. Yeah, quite a prized possession. She's maybe been lame for a, a few days, but right. I think it might have just compounded a wee bit today. Yeah. Jeff will take Biddy back to the clinic and have a closer look at her sore leg. Stay there, Biddy. Yeah. We'll give you a call sometime in the next few hours, OK? Sweet. Great. Bye-bye. Back at the clinic, Diesel's on the prowl and looking for something to do. He decides to do some pull-ups on the clothesline. Meanwhile, inside the surgery, Jeff has returned with Biddy to check out her lame leg. We just start at the toes, work our way up. Yeah, sometimes the working dogs are just a little bit too tough to tell you when it hurts, and that, um, that makes our job really interesting. Oh, you don't like that, do you? OK. An X-ray is needed to check if there is a broken bone, but it's past closing time, and the nurses have gone home. Luckily, a familiar face has just arrived for a meeting with Jeff. We were meant to have um, intense negotiations today at 5 o'clock, and walked in, and things were kind of fizzy, and, yeah, so straight on the table with the dog, um, yeah, negotiations will have to wait until after dinner. Julie was an intern vet nurse at Remarkable Vets last year as part of her studies at Massey University. You want to go between those, and she may give a little cough. Jeff was impressed with her skills at the time and was eager to have her back on the team now that she's a fully qualified vet nurse. Yeah, the long-term plan is to uh, set up a life down here and have the lifestyle and have the ultimate job. <laughs> So that's where the swelling is on the toe. And, but this is the area that she has pain in, particularly underneath. The x-rays reveal good news for Biddy. She hasn't broken a bone and she'll be heading back to the farm on strict bed rest. Meanwhile, Julie finally gets a chance to talk with Jeff and helping out with Biddy at short notice was a good move. So that's a really, really good x-ray. She starts full-time work on Monday as the clinic's new surgical nurse. The next morning begins with a unique visitor, but he's not in a good way. This oyster catcher has just been the victim of a hit and run. Oh, I just found it on the side of the road. It's, been, it's got a broken leg and a broken beak. But I couldn't leave it there to die. Yep, it was badly hurt. Well, let's take a wee look. Jeff carefully examines the broken little bird. So the shoulder was actually dislocated. Oh, you just put it back in? I have. Good. Hmm. It has a long beak because it can dig into the ground to get some a lot of worms. Hmm. It's a very bad fracture of that mm. leg, unfortunately. It's shaking a lot. Yeah. Pretty scared. Pretty scared, all right. Yeah. Unfortunately, I really think the right thing is going to be to put it to sleep. Yeah. Okay. That's alright, we talked about that, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's good to be dead instead of being alive and getting left on the road. That's a very, very good attitude. Very good comment. So despite Chris and Amelia's noble attempt to save it, there is nothing Jeff can do for the little oyster catcher. <laughs> Jeff's heading out on a field trip of a different kind today. He's a parent helper at Nigella's preschool's farm visit. I'm going on the bus. Oh, good on you, Jeff. This morning's the annual preschool farm and horse trip. So we're going to go to a little farm where there's some pet uh, sheep and cows and deer and just get the kids to touch and talk about things. And then we're going to go and do a little bit of horse riding. And it's not just any farm. Oh, look at these. Vet nurse Fiona manages a unique farm with her family, and they are the hosts of this year's visit. Hey kids, this is Judy. Yeah, yeah. And she's a red deer. Say hello to Judy. There are many friendly animals on the farm, and with Jeff on board, it's going to be a very educational day. 
Why do we think that farmers have dogs? To round up the sheep. That's a good answer. <laughs> Are sheep vegetarians? Or do sheep eat meat? The sheep eat no. No, they don't eat meat, do they? They're vegetarians. What's on the grass? Maybe it's a cow. He's got a long tail, hasn't he? Here's Doug. And all the kids are especially keen to bottle feed the baby lambs. Three, four, five, right, someone else is torn. And after the excitement of the baby animals, the preschoolers are about to have a pony ride, something Nigella has been excited about all week. Nigella's been buzzing about this for days, so there was enough energy in that bus to make it go without turning the engine on. All the other kids were really excited too. But there might be some competition for the prized white pony. What one did you want to go on, Lois? The white one. The white one. I want to go on the white one too. I love the white horse. In the end, everyone got to ride at least one of the horses, and pretty soon all the kids are tuckered out. No, are you tired after all that riding? Yeah. I think you have to carry the horses. They must be tired after all that walking around. <laughs> you had a good day? Great day. It's nine o'clock on Wednesday night, and there's a squashed kitten emergency at the clinic. I just sort of lurched to avoid one cat with two plates of food in my hand. You know, the other cat just came right underneath my foot uh, when I was completely off balance. I just sort of rolled it, you know, rolled over it. It's a bit like being trod on by an elephant or something, I think. This is something of a homecoming for Rose. Her and her sister were originally adopted from the clinic by Mike and his twin daughters. And look how much she's grown in a few short weeks. And the girls absolutely adore them and smother them and uh, have to sort of rescue them uh, from the, the kids' overzealous affections. By the time Jeff arrives, Mike's not so sure he needs them. She's actually really perky now. Yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I hang up the phone from well, you. Well, that's it, I'll go. <laughs> yeah, I still, you know, would like to get it, get it Check checked over. over. I, mean, okay. yeah, I wouldn't want to go to sleep not knowing. So Jeff gives Rose a thorough check over just in case. OK, that's good. Good symmetrical pupils and yeah, nice yeah. reflexes there. OK, chest sounds good. Mm. Nice inflation there and all nice and regular. Mike's given Rose a real fright, but luckily there's no damage done. Now yeah, that's a real motor, isn't it? It is. All righty. Right, you might go home and have some tea. That's exactly what I think it should be. Yeah. So, a quick call out, but an important check for Rose and Mike's peace of mind. It's certainly not the first time that I've seen a kitten brought in by an embarrassed owner having inflicted some potentially lethal damage to their own cat. You know, they seem to be able to withstand it, they bounce back amazingly, and sometimes they just feel like, or appear to be made of elastic. Jeff heads home, leaving Diesel to watch over the clinic for another night. The next morning, Jeff's new nurse, Julie, is on hand, and today she's running a day spa for dogs. Tessa's in to have her teeth cleaned and her nails clipped. It's just a bit of a beauty day. Hey. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Tessa hasn't been to the dentist in a long time, and even Jeff is surprised to see how rotten her teeth are. Very rotten tooth. Glad to get that out, and that'll help the breath a little bit too. I think life will be transformed, even this afternoon, just by taking these really, really painful rotten teeth out. Julie, I think we're done here in terms of extraction, so I'm going to leave you to scale and polish. Now Julie is a qualified practice nurse, she can safely finish the dental for Jeff while he treats another patient. I um, couldn't have asked for much more in my first week. Everything from rabbits to alpacas. Yeah, just happy to be oh, applying what I've spent two years trying to learn. Yeah, it's, it's great. And a final check from the boss. You can tell from here that things have improved. <laughs> Minty freshness. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. OK, right, I'll go ahead and wake her up. Great, thanks. Cool. Hopefully she'll be feeling a lot better. Tessa could have a whole new outlook on life without those teeth. <laughs> and Marigold the honking chicken has made a full recovery. After a good night's sleep at home, she returned to her normal cluck and is back to scratching around the garden. And Puffy the pony has made a good recovery too. He's taking it all in his stride. I don't think he's noticed actually. He was amazing. You know, a lot of the bigger horses that sulk for days, you know. You know, ponies are tough. They really are. 
As a treat for such a brave pony, Vicky takes Puffy and his mate Lily down to nearby Lake Hayes for a splash around. Puffy has never seen a lake before, but he's quickly learning from Lily where all the fun is, splashing the humans as much as possible. Horses just love it. They love to play. They're quite playful animals. I think we take them too seriously. Oh, my boots are filling full of water. <laughs> Sheep and 